Hi, this is Josh from Romella, and today we're going to be talking about uh, taking apart the lower head assembly on a GF machining solution cut 200 SP. Uh, the lower head uh, is one of the more common assemblies that you'll be taking apart and putting back together. Uh, reasons for doing this is honestly just after a couple months of uh, cutting, you're going to want to clean all the parts. Uh, they are submerged in water constantly and they uh, collect a lot of the debris when cutting. The other reason is a lot of times you'll get wire jams and you need to know how to uh, clear them. So today I'm going to go through what each of the components do and how to clean them. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to the machine and we're going to do the first thing you should do every single time, which is turn on the pumps uh, and fill it up with water. Once it, uh, as in all my segments, we do not want to move the machine when it doesn't have water in it because that is what lubricates uh, the X and Y axis. Now that that's done, we can turn off the pumps and we can move the machine to where we want. So because we're taking apart the lower head, we're going to move it to the center and all the way back. Okay. Now that it's here, I'm going to drain the tank so that I can work on it. So to take apart the lower head, there are uh, these three bolts up here. So these three bolts are what is, uh, makes the electrical connection. You actually only need to take out this middle bolt, which is very important. And then there's four major bolts that hold the lower head on that we need to take off. And the other thing is the ejection tube. So the ejection tube, uh, all it is, is you need to take off the clip and remove the cover. And then this is a uh, push connector that you can take apart. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take out the connector. And I'm gonna come and take apart the, uh, the top bolt. Now I'll take off the larger bolts holding the pin, uh, holding the head on. Now that I have all the bolts out, I can just pull the whole entire head off and now we can do maintenance on the head. Here now we finally have the lower head assembly. And so what we're gonna do today is clean it and we're gonna talk about uh, kind of what each component is doing. Uh, to take apart the lower head, you really just need an M3 uh, Allen key. If you want to take it apart uh, a little bit more, you're going to need a, a full set of Allen keys. But today we're just going to be using the M3. Uh, and then to clean it, I use uh, alcohol. Uh, isopropyl alcohol is all you need. Um, so essentially what we're looking at here is the wire path comes in. Here's the contactor. This is what actually creates the electrical connection. And the wire is gonna run right across this block, which will create the uh, connection. So uh, this is actually a wearable part and you can, uh, uh, on, you'll see that there's a groove uh, that gets created and eventually you have to rotate the block and just eventually replace it. The wire then comes in through this ceramic part and it hits these uh, pinch rollers, which will grab the wire and pull it all the way through this block. And then this is where it exits out of the lower head. Uh, oftentimes when you get a wire block, it'll occur right here and you need to take everything apart. Okay, so the first thing you do when you're taking apart the lower head is this is actually a tensioner for these uh, two uh, pinch rollers. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen that up. So before you loosen it, uh, this is in the manual, so you can look at this too, but uh, take a pair of calipers and measure what the spring length is. It should be right around 21 millimeters. So this one I'm getting about 
uh, 21.6 and that's where you kind of want it to be. Um, so now we're gonna loosen this up, which is right here. I'm gonna back it all the way off. And now you see that the uh, you actually can move this pin troll, it's on a slide. So now everything's loose. The first parts I'm gonna take off are actually the ceramic parts. So these are the most fragile and you kinda wanna get them out of the way before you remove anything else. So this one you see a, uh, there's these three bolts which are actually holding the ceramic part on. This, which they call the whistle guide, uh, that actually sets the length of the whistle guide. You don't wanna touch that unless you're recalibrating and same with those two. That is what pins down the whistle guide. So just to take it off, I'm only gonna use these three. The distance between the whistle guide and the pin rollers is very critical, and this will actually cause wire jams. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna remove this right now because it actually took a little bit of trial and error to get the uh, length from the, um, the pin rollers and the whistle guide. So, but if you wanna set that, you can uh, change these. So now, now that these three are undone, we can actually just pull this entire thing straight up and move it to the side. Uh, this chamber is now filled with water. I'm just gonna dump it out really quick. This is just the plate that goes under the whistle guide and I'm just gonna take that off also. Now we can remove the pinch rollers. Uh, the pinch rollers typically need to be removed when you have a wire jam, it'll get wrapped around. We're just gonna do it. Uh, this little piece right here is just to clamp onto the uh, gears so that the, uh, you can get torque on the pinch rollers. The gears just sit on this bearing uh, with the gear and then the pin roller assembly. A lot of times what you'll find is during a wire jam, you'll have a uh, wire actually wrap around the shaft, which will cause uh, friction in the system. So a lot of times after a wire jam, you do need to remove this assembly. Okay, uh, actually we're also gonna remove the uh, electrical contact. Uh, every item on here is aligned using pins, so everything will go back uh, just as it is. All right, so now that we have it completely disassembled, uh, what we're gonna do is everything I'm just gonna kinda wipe down and then clean with isopropyl alcohol. You wanna rinse everything off because uh, you should really use cleaners that don't leave a residue uh, because the, the water that's used during the cutting process is deionized water that should be pretty pure or else you're gonna start to degrade your cutting process. So uh, the O-ring around here just has grease. We're gonna wipe away the old grease and we're gonna apply some uh, fresh grease when we put it back on. The cutting process naturally builds up uh, dirt on all of the parts or, or little particles. And so what we wanna do is just kinda wash that all away. Uh, there's gonna be a layer of this and what it'll start to do is uh, cause buildup and change the wire path which can lead to wire breaks. So we just wanna clean off every shaft surface, just prevent buildup which will uh, start to cause problems.
Uh, notice how, well, the uh, gear here controls this shaft, which will rotate this uh, gear, which then rotates the other gear. Once again, if wire gets wrapped around those, it'll cause friction, uh, which can cause problems and lead to wire breaks. Eventually the pinch rollers will get worn out, see the, the wear mark of the wire, and eventually they need to be replaced. Or you can also just flip them over and get uh, uh, more life out of them. Once again, you can use this to clamp onto the gear so that you can torque down on the gears. You don't need to wrench on it. Okay, now that that's back in, we can reset our spring to a little over 21 millimeters. Okay, uh, with the contactor, uh, this has been cleaned, but you can actually see I broke this uh, and this part needs to be replaced, but luckily the other side is what makes contact, so we're pushing through for right now. Uh, this part in particular will build up corrosion and needs to be washed off. Any part that has the wire flowing through it uh, really needs to be cleaned. You can see kind of the buildup of material here. I'll actually fill up a cup with alcohol and kind of give it a little rinse. I just rinse it off with DI water, um, kind of to blast out some of the material. Same with the whistle. All right, now the head is almost ready to be put back on. What we need to do is apply new grease around the O-ring um, and then reverse the process. So just push it back on, um, put in the four bolts, make sure to remember, so the uh, uh, ejection tube is gonna go up through there, remember to put that back in. And then the, uh, the pin that does the contactor is right there and what that does is complete the connection right here. Uh, the grease that we use for uh, actually greasing the machine and any O-ring uh, is the same. It's the Blasso Lube 301. Uh, so I'm just going to use a little bit of that to uh, grease the O-ring on this. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off the surface on the machine. You want a nice surface to uh, have the O-ring sit on. The gear needs to mate uh, inside here. And so if this is moved, sometimes it's a little challenging to put back on and you just kind of need to keep moving until you get a position you want. You want it to be pretty tight, but you don't need to wrench on it. These, uh, it's actually 
uh, plastic uh, threads and you can strip them. Once you have that, remember to put the ejection tube back in. Make sure it's shoved all the way up. Keep pressing, keep shoving until it stops you. If you don't, uh, there'll be a gap between the tube and where it ejects and you can actually have wire jams from that. Put the sleeve back up, put the clip back on. And then the last thing to not forget is to uh, uh, make sure that you uh, put the bolt back in that connects the electrical contact or else you won't be able to cut. A uh, little, a couple things. Um, so the lower head actually has high pressure inside of it. And so that's what the O-ring is for. Uh, if you put that back on, if the O-ring doesn't get seated right, you'll see water squirting out the sides. Uh, sometimes it just, uh, if you just cycle uh, hot, uh, water through it, the O-ring will settle out and you'll be fine. Uh, other times you're gonna have to unseat it, maybe add a little bit more grease and put it back on. So one of the first things you wanna do uh, when you put the lower head back on is you wanna just check that everything's holding pressure. So the first thing you can come and hit the jet button and that'll turn on the lower jet. Uh, I don't see any water coming out of the lower head so that's a good thing. So I can turn that off. Now what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and thread the wire. So hitting this thread button, it starts the thread routine. We'll hear the jet come on. Uh, and it threads the wire. Uh, this time, uh, it was great, uh, the wire threaded. Uh, occasionally, after you do that, you'll have a low pressure error, which I'll show you in a minute, and you'll actually see water coming out of there and you'd have to keep cycling through. All right, so debugging, once you've put the lower head back on, if you don't have pressure, what you'll get is an alarm like this low pressure in lower head, that means it can't hold pressure down there. Sometimes you get lucky and you can just cycle uh, through again. So once again, I'm gonna try and thread again and we'll see if it lets me. You can see that water's coming out there, which means it's not seating very well. But now the head is holding pressure and no water's coming out, which means because it cycled high pressure down there, uh, the O-ring just naturally seated itself. So uh, if it kept going and I couldn't do it, uh, I'd have to take it back off and make sure that the O-ring is seated correctly. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, you have to have it shut. Uh, so if I didn't put the electrical contact back on right, uh, we wouldn't be able to cut the wire. So that's the next thing to try. So cut here, press the cut button, it's going through, wait a little bit. I don't get any errors, which means that we do have electrical contact, which means everything is set up and we're good to go.